Hi, Isaac. Welcome. Hey, Tess. How are you? I am great. I'm so excited to have you on. We have known each other for many years, and so this feels like a really cool full circle thing. And um, for everybody who does not know you, please tell us about yourself. All right. Well, I'm Isaac. I'm, a, I'm what you call a sidereal astrologer. Uh, so my astrology practice is uh, astronomically aligned um, astrology. So I align with the actual constellations in the sky, the sizes and position. And, um, and most people are surprised when they realize that the tropical mainstream astrology doesn't align with the constellations in the, in the sky. So this is what we're going to talk about today. So that's what I do. And as you know, from back in the day, I have a background in astronomy and astrophotography. So I studied with the, with the actual sky. So this is why I practice astrology with the actual sky. So. Yeah, your images are amazing. I remember when I first met you, you had your uh, van. Is it an astro van? Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's, a, yeah. Yeah, it's an Airstream, Westphalia. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And <laughs> you were set out, I think it was on Broadway, was one of the first in Saratoga where I'm oh. from and you had your big telescope out and uh I just was blown away by how far out uh -huh. actually I just now understood why in the 70s people would be like oh that's far out man <laughs> <laughs> because your telescope would go so far out that you could see all of these planets and stars and galaxies yes. and the moon in such detail and um yeah, yeah what a trip yeah, yeah, that's my background. So, and that's kind of the story, you know, I was doing that and then following all of the mainstream astrology sites and then realizing when they're saying the full moon is, is in one place, it's actually, you know, in another place, you know, they'd say full moons in Gemini and I look in the sky and I'm like, well, no, it's in Taurus. So that's, that's a, that's, a, I mean, that's an issue, right? I mean, um, so we can talk more about that if you want, like, why is it off and what happened and is it a conspiracy and what's the story, the reality, you know, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> I love conspiracies. Um, yeah. and yes, I think that would be a great topic because is it known as Vedic astrology, which is what the more modern, what mm -hmm. everybody reads their horoscopes on now and yeah. So Vedic, what the, the, the connection is, Vedic uses the sidereal uh, zodiac wheel. It uses the sidereal movements where tropical doesn't use the sidereal movement. So basically, sidereal means star time. And I don't know if you read the recent news, um, Elon Musk and his wife or whatever, they had a baby. Oh, yeah, baby. I saw that. Sidereal, they, yeah. they named her Doc Sidereal. Mm -hmm. And they explain what sidereal means, and it's exactly what I'm saying. It's actual star time, celestial time. So I'll explain this for, for your listeners. So this, there's the three words that I use, and with these three words, you can fact check everything that I say. So you look up the difference between tropical astrology and sidereal astrology, and then you look up what's the movement that's missing from tropical. It's called precession of the equinox. So that, that word, that phrase, precession of the equinox, what is that? That's what gives us the ages. So we have a wobble that takes 25,920 years to complete. And that's, that's called the great year. And people can look all of this stuff up. It's the great year. And the Vedics know about this. In Vedic, it's called the yugas. We heard of the yugas, right? Kali yuga, the dark age. Tetra yuga, right? The silver age. Um, I forget what the name of the gold, um, I forget the name, but, the, but it's the ages. We all have that. Now we heard of age of Aquarius, right? Mm -hmm, we heard that. Definitely. Well, okay. So what precession is, and this is the mechanism, the movement that's not calculated in tropical astrology. It, it, we, are, we are shifting, the sky is seen as us shifting through the zodiac one degree every 72 years. So it's hardly noticeable. So within one lifetime, we move one degree. One degree at an arm's length, if you're looking at your finger in the sky, is half of your finger. So in one lifetime, you're not going to notice that. But the ancients knew what, that we had a bigger clock that we were keeping time with. And, and, and that's tracking the ages. And how they would track the ages is they would build monuments that would face east at the age it was built. So for example, I'm in Egypt now. 
Okay, so the Sphinx faces east. So it's saying we built this during the age of Leo when the sun was rising on the spring equinox, uh, looking at Leo. That's, that's how the ancients built. They built with celestial alignments like that. So they can tell the time. So with that time, now you can tell when the Sphinx was built. And so, so now what direction is the, the Sphinx facing? Okay, no, it's still facing east, but okay. on the spring equinox, the constellation that's there yeah. is the, the, end, the end of the constellation of Pisces. So right now we're in the age of Pisces, right? And, and, and the, 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 the dominating sort of uh, religion right now is like Christianity, right? So what's the symbol of Jesus Christ is the fish mm. because he's the son, S-O-N, or they say S-U-N, son, son of God, rises in what constellation and in Pisces, right? Spring equinox, the sun is in Pisces. But most people believe that the sun is in Aries on the spring equinox, March 21st. But if you look at any sky chart, the sun is gonna be in Pisces. It's ending Pisces and it's dawning on the age of Aquarius. So within 400 years, when we look to the east on the spring equinox, Aries will be, I mean, uh, Aquarius will be rising with the sun. So now we're in the age of Aquarius. Oh, so it's, so I'll go backwards to my comment of, is this the Sphinx facing a different direction? The earth hasn't changed, but it's the stars and their constellation from what I'm gathering seems to be shifting backwards rather than yeah. moving forwards. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's precess, not process. Yeah, pre, so it's one degree a year. So if you do the math, right? So it's the beginning of the age of Pisces is, is uh, is when Jesus was born. So technically, the a the time frame they gave it was 200 A.D. The two zodiacs match. That's astrology, but we know A.D. You know was when Christ was born. So that's about 2,000 somewhat years. So every 72 years of that, you go back one degree. So you're about 24 degrees back backwards now. So we've we've shifted back 24 degrees. Sidereal astrologers and Vedic astrologers has accounted for this shift. Tropical hasn't. They're still they're still in 2000. Why? That's the conspiracy part. Why? <laughs> <laughs> this is okay. So now let, let, let's get this clear for your readers because I, I like to I like to put science first and be like, this is what's going on. And now why don't we know about this? Now this is where it gets kind of like what is going on here. So. So your, your readers will look up sidereal zodiac versus the tropical zodiac, and they'll look up precession of the equinox. So without my influence, they can do their own searching, research, and figure it out. Like, oh my God, this guy's telling the truth. Okay, so, so one. Now two, why is it off? And this is why I'm on a mission. This is actually why I'm in Egypt right now. I'm, I'm going to these temples because this is known as the land of the fallen star gods. Because if you go to these temples, you'll see celestial images everywhere that if you know what you're looking for, you'll see that they're telling you something through celestial alignments. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at all of this, right? Literally right now, every day I go. Um, so anyway, so what, what in my search of wondering why is this off? Because remember I was a, an astronomer, like this is weird. If you, everyone assumes, oh, well, your sun sign like you, your sun sign, I'm a Gemini. It's like, well, that means my sun was in the constellation of the Gemini. No, it wasn't. So why is that? Why is it all? So I'm researching and I, I run into a book called the Hermetica. It's a, it's a Egypt, Egyptian book based on the teachings of Toth, which then gets translated to Hermes Trismegistus. So in there, there's a conversation with a tomb. A tomb is supposed to be the prime creator, the God, it's supposed to be God. And, and there's a conversation with God saying, what are we gonna do with these human beings on, on, on this planet? Because if they know the way of the stars, they'll be too powerful and then we can't control them. And a tomb, so the phrase goes, a tomb replies, don't worry, I'm gonna build a mechanism that will control humanity, every living thing on that planet from life to death. And that mechanism is going to be called the zodiac. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm That's looking crazy. at this like, yeah, yeah, the zodiac is to control us. Or but but the key is if they if these humans know the way, and the words they use is if they know the way of the lights, then they'll be too powerful for us to control. And that's what he says, the zodiac. And 
The zodiac is even mentioned in the Bible. It's it's the Maseroth. It's called Maseroth. You look up the Bible notes. It's it's Maseroth. And there's a phrase of Job 38, 31 that talks about, um, do you know the constellations? Can you move forth? Can you move forward knowing the Maseroth? Can you lead yourself forward knowing the Maseroth? Meaning, can you lead yourself forward knowing the zodiac? Right? So this is the Bible, which we know, we've learned that astrology is evil, it's the devil. You know? There's all this like taboo stuff with that, but it's in there. There's multiple phrases about astrology there. So anyway, so I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, well, then that makes a lot of sense of why the astrology that is not aligned with the constellations, that's the most popular because they're keeping us disconnected. That's the issue that we have. Like disillusioned. It's like a fake yeah. kind of lens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're doing healing stuff now. So you know the Reiki energy, right? So you know when you're learning Reiki, the first thing you learn, they say, well, think of Reiki energy as a dial on a radio. You can hear something a little bit, but if you fine-tune the dial, then it's clear and you'll get the clearer message. So I'm under that belief system that we're scrambled a little bit. You know, mm, when not fully alive. yeah, yeah, and then that becomes the most popular astrology, right? It gets the most funded, and now everybody cool, like all the cool celebrity astrologers, they're all doing tropical. And if you try to talk to them, they're like, "Well, no, like I'm famous. I'm like, why do I, you know, I, why do I need to change? I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. It's and their ego is inflated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So this is what's what's kind of going around, and, and you know. Like this is this is the issue we have. So that's that's what I've found is is going on like with astrology and, and, and the issues that we're having of why it's off, sort of conspiracy-ish, but I think it's kind of true because if you look at like like they say the elites use sidereal astrology and you're like, well, that's a conspiracy. Well, look at the name of Elon Musk's new new child, it's called sidereal. They they know, you know. So this is where where, where I'm at with it. <laughs> And so just because they used that name, mm -hmm. it I could predict that it will become more popular because of them. Yeah, yeah. let's hope so. And I think um, this gets more into kind of what I'm looking at. There's a, there's a number, 23.5 degrees, and that's the obliquity of the earth, the tilt of the earth. There's a book called The Giza Prophecy, and he points to that number, 23.5, is hidden in a lot of um, artwork from the Knights Templar to the Three Masons, a lot of ancient mystery schools, like they even saw George Washington holding a staff and the angle is 23.5. The Vertuvian Man by Da Vinci, his angle is 23.5. It's a five-pointed star. You go to all the tombs in Egypt, they have stars in the ceiling, five-pointed stars, same angles. And then I did some measuring myself so the Sphinx is facing east, right? Like I said, and then there's a little causeway, like a walkway. So I took an angle app, a measuring app, and the difference between the, the Sphinx looking east and that causeway also east, but slight different, is 23.5 degrees. <laughs> and, and there's other, in, in the temples, there's the Jed pillar that's tilted. The Jed is power. It's tilted sideways, 23.5 degrees. There's a, a pyramid that you see that means the gift bread, gift of giving bread. It's a it's a triangle like this. I did the measurement. It's 23.5 degrees, and it's seen usually next to the ankh. So the gift, the ankh is eternal life. So the gift of secret knowledge for eternal lifetime is what that would translate to. But any Egyptologist will say, oh, that means bread, giving a gift of bread. So I'm like, no, I did the measurement. I'm like, there's something more to this hieroglyph and I measured it and it's 23.5. So, so why is 23.5 important to us other than it's the tilt of the planet? Okay, this is what I'm getting to because that's the same amount of degrees off 23.5 to 24 that we're out of alignment with the actual sky, tropical astrology. So my mind is wondering, what is this number? Because 23.5 and 24, it's half, half a degree. It's about 30 years. So for the last 30 something years, we were waking up to like, whoa. So I'm wondering, like you said, Elon Musk will probably 
enlightened people to sidereal. I'm wondering is 23.5 to 24, the breaking point in every cycle of an age, the ages, an average age is 2,160 years. So, so at the, at 2,000 years, is there a breaking point where it's like, okay, you, you're now realizing you're 24 degrees out of alignment. So either you wake up and you get back into alignment or you just stay and you, and you dissipate us. I don't know what, but there's, mm -hmm. how ironic is it that I'm a sidereal astrologer. I've been called to Egypt and I'm, I have, I bought a one-way ticket, by the way. I'm just like, I don't know why I'm going home. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm running into people here. Friends are showing up here. Like we all hear a calling. So what is the odds that I'm doing this? And I realized, and, and the 23 degree alignment with the Sphinx, I noticed on the last day I was in a hotel room that was looking directly at the Sphinx and a series of events happened that I, like, I, I missed my flight and it was like, I was like, oh my God. So they were like, well, we can give you the last room upstairs. And it was like right by the, by, by the speakers and it was weird. I'm like, this is miserable. But on the next morning, I was looking out my window, looking at the Sphinx and the causeway and I'm like, wait a second, there's something here. And then I took the picture and I measured it. And, and so things like that are happening for me, you know? So, so, so the yeah. Egyptian God, repeat his name for me. Mm -hmm. Atum. Uh, oh, oh, Atum, Atum. It's so Atum said, I am going to put humanity off their track through the Zodiac. They yeah. built the Sphinx facing true directional east yes. and then there happens to be this causeway mm -hmm. where that people walk that mm -hmm. are leading them 23 and a half degrees away from yeah. the true direction <laughs> yeah, exactly. it cannot be more obvious <laughs> exactly <laughs> thank you that's why i was like whoa yeah <laughs> i'll share that image with you if you want to just post that it is around fascinating yeah. And just that yeah. the alignment of like, no, you can't leave yet. All of your flights yeah. are going to get canceled. We need to reroute yeah. you to this room so that you can find this piece of information. And exactly. that is, that's like the magic that I love to see and the angels guiding us. And that's my yeah. opinion, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly right. You got exactly right. I, I knew when I, when I, I was laying out in the bed, I'm like, what am I doing in this room? I look out and I'm like, oh my God, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> so that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about birth charts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So we have a little story. I don't know who wants to start. <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So tell us. Yeah. I was going to. Okay. So <laughs> I'll, int I'll intro it. Um, I, astrology is very fun for me. I am kind of at like a, I like to say like the beginning of a 102 level class. Mm -hmm. I got the basics down and I'm now like, and I've kind of just stopped myself at that point because I don't need to, I don't feel personally that that's my path and I don't need to dive in deeper. However, I've always been looking at the tropical version of my astrology. And so what I understand that to be is I'm a Gemini sun, which means that I'm, my birthday is, June, June 18th, and mm -hmm. that falls under Gemini. And then my rising sign is in Pisces and my ascendant sign or moon sign is also in Pisces. And so mm -hmm. I am a Gemini, Pisces, Pisces, mm -hmm. lots of duality, lots of mutability. I don't really identify with Gemini, but I heavily identify with Pisces. Any horoscope that I've read for Gemini, I'm always like, eh, I don't really mm. see that, but I like the concept of it because they're very mm -hmm. fun and they're a good host. And, mm -hmm. uh, but the Pisces I can like sink into. So I'm hanging out with Isaac and he's like, okay, let me read your chart because you're wrong. And <laughs> I give him my birth information, which to do that, you would need your birth place the, obviously the date that you were born and then the time that you were born and paying attention to if it's AM or PM, that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And your astrologer, Isaac happens to be my astrologer at that moment, beep, boop, 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 tab, types it in and it comes up and then you take it away, Isaac. Okay. So, so first of all, you're a Taurus and, um, 
And uh, you were like, no, I'm not a Taurus. I'm like, yeah, you're a Taurus. And they're like, oh my God. So then we had a reading, but the funny part of it was like, you were a little hesitant because I was like, hey, you also have, that was, you had Saturn return coming. And Saturn return, you know, if you're not in full alignment, Oh, it, it, it paused. Pretty much pulls your rug out, Hold of, on. out on the URS. Um, It stopped okay. right, restart with Saturn alignment because it paused. Okay. So I noticed that when I, when uh, we were doing the, re we were planning the meeting for your reading that we, you were having a Saturn return. So I thought it was important for you because I noticed that your Saturn was in your 10th house that had to do with your career and your reputation. And so I was like, okay, like, you know, like, let's, let's do it. And then we had an incident where the day you came to my house to do the reading, <laughs> these people had a, a surprise party planned for me because it was the day after my birthday and they missed my birthday and they freaked you out. They just like barged in. Yeah. Yeah. Balloons. And... <laughs> Say that again. You thought they were Jehovah Witnesses because they were like, are you going in for an astrology reading? Don't go in, don't go in. You were like, get away. <laughs> yeah, you remember that? Yeah. Now yeah, I do. You know <laughs> oh my God, I forgot that because we actually met each other outside the front door. Yeah. I always had a picture of me being already inside and then them coming in. That's so, I forgot about that. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah they did. And then we were sitting about to read and then they're like, you know, bringing up a huge tree through my door. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was nice to see. So Saturn return for people who don't know what that is. Saturn has a cycle like the earth does around the sun and the earth cycle is 365 days and that's what we call our birthdays saturn also has that it has its own birthday and that is what is it 27 and a half no, 29 and a half 29, 29 and a half 30 yeah to 30 mm -hmm. years it takes saturn to do a full cycle around the sun and mm -hmm. that pull from saturn is affecting us so mm -hmm. when we were born 29 and a half years later when Saturn returns is mm -hmm. kind of like a different type of birthday for us and that is going to like slam us into more alignment if we are out of alignment and for people it can be like very devastating very rock mm -hmm. bottom energy if you're way off course and it can mm -hmm. last a longer period of time for different people but what Isaac found for me was that mine was very short mine was only like a week long yeah, yeah, it was short, but it was it was in your career house and Saturn is conjunct Uranus too. So that was interesting. And actually, believe it or not, I, I have your chart. I was looking at it again today. It's I use the 13 zodiac signs. So uh, there's a 13 zodiac sign called Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus. And I trace the Fucus back to who is the Fucus, right? And a lot of Greek mythology. Is, is rooted directly into Egyptian mythology. So a fucus, the 13th zodiac sign is actually Imhotep. Imhotep was the great architect of the pyramid, the step pyramid, the first pyramid of Egypt is where Imhotep built. He was the god of medicine. You know, so all these things are related to the 13th zodiac sign. So you have Saturn and Uranus in the, in the fucus, the 13th sign. That's and so cool. Yeah, and that sign is the galactic center. That's where the Milky Way is. So, yeah, and I, I look further into what is that part of the sky, the galactic center. A lot of, a lot of ancient cultures look to that part of the sky as where the ancient builders come from. So in the Aztec and the Mayans, Quetzalcoatl, Veracocha, Kukulkan, they all point to that part of the sky as that's where the, the creator of of humanity or the gods that bring us knowledge. This is where they enter to and from our, our two worlds. And, and then further research on that, that point of the sky is actually, there's a galaxy merging with our galaxy right at that point. So there is literally another world merging. There's other, another galaxy coming right there. Wow. So, so there, might, there might be something there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And it's the 13th sign. And 
you know, I don't know if you've seen like the, la the image of the Last Supper and people relate that to um, astrology and they show it as the constellations. Yeah, if you look up Last Supper astrology image, it, it relates this 12 disciples and then this Jesus, right? So it's 12 zodiac signs and then they say Jesus is the sun, S-O-N, S-U-N, right? But I see, I saw it as something different. Because if it's zodiac signs, not planets, right? So it's signs. So six signs on one side, six on the other. And then if Jesus is a sign, what sign is that? That's the Fucus. 13th sign. The Fucus. 13th <laughs> the creator. In the yeah. He's in the middle of the Milky Way. Yeah. So this is the thing. This is what I'm, I'm uncovering as I move along. Because Emotep was a real living person. And that's what they say. Christ consciousness, Emotep. Of Fucus. These are all the ones who, who knew the art of resurrection. They knew how eternal life, like you don't have to be afraid of death. It's just a cycle, you know, and, and that's kind of the journey I'm on in Egypt. Well, I'm going through all these mortuary temples and the guides are telling me, and I'm asking these questions. And he's like, well, the Egyptians saw death as just like falling asleep in one world and waking up in another. And then when they come back, they fall asleep in that world and they come. It's that simple. It's like they see death as just, okay, well, you're just going to sleep now. And then you'll, you'll wake up over there. And that's what all of their, the hieroglyphs and the mortuary temples, these are prayers to make sure that they don't suffer amnesia as they're making these transitions. So, so that's, this is how important the stars are, right? Knowing the stars. So anyway, your, your Saturn and Uranus are right are right there. And Saturn is, is, a, is physical, is the physical structure. Um, and it's time, right? The root word of uh, Saturn is related to chronos. The root word of anything time is chronos, right? Chronological order, uh -huh. chronometer, right? A chronograph, like on time, the, it's chronos. So Saturn is time, structure, limits. So we're born with, with, the, with the square of Saturn. And Uranus is the complete opposite. Uranus is freedom, new ideas, liberation, you know, um, creativity. And there's a Greek mythology story that they fight each other. Uranus, right? Saturn castrates Uranus, Uranus, but it's Uranus, Uranus. Mm -hmm. So there's a story with that. Saturn takes the freedom of his, of his, uh, of his, um, reproductive organs, right? His testicles, right? So, so like there's like stories in that. So you have those two planets conjunct. So when your Saturn comes around to that, Saturn is like the father of time, the, your uncle that says, Tess, what have you been doing for the last 20, 29.5 years? Uh, yeah, you, and, and I see you as a very spiritual person. You have like, and, and I saw that a long time ago, but back in those days you were, you were in business, right? We were kind of both in business. You had retail store, you were like super serious and you had, you know, your ways that were like, this is business, this is how it goes. And you, you had a beautiful store and you had structured everything and everything, right? But I'm like, well, hey, Tess, you should look at this because you have a more spiritual um, setup in your life. You have to allow for more spirituality to flow. And, and you know, you had your thing. And then of course, Saturn, you know, made that change because this you, you gave up your store you moved around you did this and now you know here you are doing doing the the, the golden podcast right like and and tapping into your spiritual goddess self because you have pluto in virgo i saw pluto pluto in virgo is the divine sophia energy it's the transformer the divine feminine transformer so i saw all of this playing out and i'm like Ooh. yes <laughs> yeah. So, so my best friend Huey, when I was just kind of embarking on this switch, especially from being a private celebrity chef, and then the decision of March 1st, 2022, I am no longer working in that field. And yeah. I was really, I was confident, but then there was also tenderness and a little insecurity around that because it's a big change. And I had a situation that really triggered me and I left that situation and I was just crying in my car. And I was like, what am I doing? Like people aren't understanding what I'm trying to do. They keep telling me to stay in food. I don't want to. And I called my best friend Huey and I'm crying and he answers and he's like, you are the metamorphosis goddess. And then went into his like 
amazing poetry self and just started slinging words all over the place but that phrase the metamorphosis goddess and then you just said in my pluto is this transformation sophia yeah. energy mm -hmm. so that's really cool yeah 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 so it's really powerful yeah i was looking because it's between the ninth and the eighth and the ninth so eighth eighth is is ruled by pluto and scorpio so that's transformation but coming into the ninth you start to use the knowledge of the, the, the cycles of life and death and endings and beginnings. You start to use the knowledge and realize that this power, this power in letting go, this power in, in transformation, you have to let things die in order to fertilize and, and have fertile soil to grow again. So that's, and Sophia, so Virgo, Vir, if you look at the constellation of Virgo is, is known as the, you know, the M and then it has a loop on the side. That's the mother and the loop is birth. So yeah, and it's Mary, mother, Mary, and then matter, M-A-T-T-E-R, right? Matter. And I'm reading all this kind of cosmology, like esoteric astrology, and I'm going like, yeah, that, and that makes sense because as, as an astronomer, we used to photograph the Virgo uh, constellation a lot because it's it's for some reason there's there's thousands of galaxies within Virgo and 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 it's like yeah and I remember reading I'm like yeah I know because we have we shoot that all the time like we I, astronomers love shooting the Virgo constellation because you can spend days shooting a galaxy a new galaxy every day so then so ahead. if I'm understanding that right when you have your telescope and you're pointed looking at the Virgo constellation mm -hmm. beyond the Virgo stars or within it are the yeah, well, galaxies or is it like a portal tunnel? Like you first look at Virgo and then you go beyond Virgo and yeah. that acts as a portal to all these other galaxies. <laughs> yes, exactly right, yeah. That yeah, is that, crazy. That, yeah, because that because the galaxies are beyond our galaxy. That Virgo star is, 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 is in our galaxy other galaxies are out of our galaxy so the virgo so, is just the frame really yeah exactly it's like right. the point like hey align yeah. to this point and then look through it look through it exactly look through the mother's womb and you'll see birth and so that led me to okay so exciting right see how exciting you are so my jaw I, is wow. like on the floor right <laughs> yeah so then i'm going like yeah that makes sense you know because whatever and then, uh, and then I start reading the cosmology. Show. So if you look, every every ancient um, every ancient culture has a weaving mother goddess. There's a like net net or net is is in Egypt, right? Not the sky goddess. And then Greek is Arachne. Um, uh, Norse, I think, is Freya. Uh, indigenous American Indians is uh, weaving. I think it's called the grandmother spider. And and um, I forget the one in, in, in Peru, the Peruvian mother spider. There's, there's so many weaving mother spiders. And you can even look that up and there's a list. And, and that's what I noticed, like looking at Virgo in a telescope, or even on a star program, you know, Stellarium is a free program. And you zoom in, it literally looks like when you look at a spider that gave birth and there's a bunch of little spiders on the web, it looks like that. And I'm just like, that's exactly what the ancients saw. And, the, and that's why this is the creation space of life. Because, you know, you have to realize the constellations don't look like what, like Virgo constellation does not look like a goddess mother. It's like some people joke and they say it looks like a fallen giraffe, you know? Uh, yeah, Scorpio looks like a hammerhead shark. Um, Sagittarius looks like a tea kettle. So, the ancients knew what was going on in, in the celestial sphere. So, and, and these, these areas of space have, have energy. And, and, and this is how we map out the archetypal energy. We give them these archetypal names and we relate to them that way because there's something deeper going on in that area of space. So Virgo, for example, is a weaving mother that you look, it looks like you're looking at a spider web with a bunch of little babies and those babies are galaxies. And we're part of we're part of the Virgo supercluster. We're a galaxy within the cluster of those galaxies. So that's our mother, <laughs> right? If wow. you think about it, yeah, 
Yeah. And even more exciting, right? You look up, I was, because I'm in Egypt and I'm looking at the hieroglyphs and I'm having an issue because they're being explained to me in Arabic. And if you, if you understand the history of Egypt, it's, it's been invaded multiple times and the last invasion was the Arabic Muslim. That, uh, so it's not the, 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 the Arabs that are here now, this is not the ancient Egyptians. So when they're explaining it in their language, it, it's, it was just not good because you're, you're like me, we, we, we understand energy and it's like, that's not right. So I started going to the temples alone and I'm starting to look and I'm, and I'm realizing that the ancient Egyptian language, if you look it up online, what was the ancient Egyptian language before all these invasions? There is none. The hieroglyphs make a mental impression, that's it. So I'm having this experience with these hieroglyphs and I'm like, I'm getting mental impressions that are way different than the Arabic impressions that I'm hearing. And one of them is the symbol of birth is an M. And then on top of the M there's a three ray star, the triad, but it also looks like a hump, like the Virgo M. And I'm, and I'm looking at it and it's, it's just, it's resonating, it's just talking to me, it's saying, it's saying, I'm birth, I am Virgo. And I look up, I look up the meaning of the M and it says, yeah, this is birth. And then you match it, it's it, the M of Virgo. So, so this is what I'm coming across, things like this. Like, you know, ancients knew about all this stuff. Wow. So the history of Egypt has been coming up. Egypt in general has been coming up a lot for me. And I am very diligent every day. I make a list of synchronicities, things that repeat either places, information, songs, whatever book titles, I just make a note of it. So Egypt has had been coming up. And then I connected with you and you said you were in Egypt. And I was like, that's crazy. Egypt's been coming up a lot since then. It's just been like wildfire. I hear it at least once a day. It's all over the place. And I was just listening to a podcast episode on Natalia Benson's podcast with um, a new, uh, sorry, with a shaman named Makoshi. And she was describing when she was first a little being, like a two, three-year-old, she would talk to her mom about how to mummify her body when she dies so that she could come back. And she said she was a really like weird little kid because she was spewing all of that information and people would look at her like she like grew up in Chicago and her mom was not like that. And like, what are you talking about? But she then became a shaman and realigned with that path for herself, spent many years back in Africa and Egypt is in Africa. So it's culture is based in African culture. And this is Mm -hmm. before the Arabs and the Middle East started invading, just like you said, but all of that was lost because of just the the way that we wipe out history when it includes mm-hmm. African culture. So it's mm-hmm. it's really cool that you're then also bringing this up right now because it's just embedding that even more in me. Yeah, yeah, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad, with, yeah, I'm glad that's what we're here for. I think, I think a lot of us are having this awakening. We're all remembering what, what, what are we doing? Why are we here? I mean, like, all of us, there's so many of us. And then there's so many of us that are not having this awakening. They all want things to go back to normal. They want to, you know, drive through rush hour traffic and, you know, whatever it is, right? And it's like, people like us are like, there's no way I can ever do that again. Because we're, we're remembering, we're remembering and we're awakening. And it's, yeah. it's, this is how it's working. And we're paying attention, I think. So that's why, you know, we're connecting, you know, like, and, and you're doing your thing. And we're, we're, we're like, okay, like, here we go again. Let's pay attention. <laughs> and that's a good key word, like the again. Here we go again. Yeah. It's it's always this looping pattern. Mm-hmm. Our lives are looping patterns. We talk, I've talked about that in previous episodes with negative looping patterns or looping thoughts. It can be also positive. Saturn is a looping pattern that returns mm-hmm. the earth, mm-hmm. all of this, it just is a continuation and we know it. And it's mm-hmm. happening again. And so how can we clear ourselves and align so that we can remember again? Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. It's funny because you say Saturn. So I, there was a book called, 
I think it's by Liz Green or Stephen Forrest, one of those astrologers, but it's called, I think it's called Saturn, a Sa another look at this old devil. And there's a beautiful phrase there that says, um, Saturn is the hands that wrap around your neck for your, almost your entire life or most of your life. It says something like that. But once you get the lessons that it's trying to burn into you, those hands release from your neck and they become guiding hands through the doorway. So, so that's Saturn. It's like, get the lesson. Like, yeah, it's going to be hard. You know, you came to earth for a reason. This is, this is a, a, a school of, of sorts. And, you know, the challenge you chose, you got to rise to it. You chose it for a reason because when you get through it, then you're going to ascend to the next level. So that's the reason why I think reading an astro a sidereal astrology chart makes more sense than tropical because sidereal is you're going, basically you're saying, by reading a sidereal chart, you're saying, well, a tomb, he created me. Right, the creator God created me, but then he wants to control me because then I'll be like a crazy kid. So he built this mechanism to control me. So I have to learn what this mechanism is made out of. I have to learn how to resonate with this mechanism because I want to be able to go past the mechanism. I want to get out of the gate. And you start looking into numbers and mythology and you realize um, Dante's Inferno is a really good one to look at. There's the spheres. So the seventh sphere is, 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 is Saturn's sphere. We live in the realm of Saturn, time, Saturn. The eighth sphere, what is that? The firmament, what is the firmament? The stars. We refer to sidereal astrology as relating to the stars. So you break out of the seventh sphere, you resonate with the eighth sphere and you're, you're resonating with the stars. And what's after the eighth sphere? The ninth sphere, what is that? The sphere of the heavens. So you break through Saturn, the karma, the lessons, you resonate with the eighth, the, the celestial cosmic realm, and then you can access the angels, the sphere of the angels. So, wow. so I'm, I'm resonating hard with the eighth. <laughs> I, like, I want to make sure I don't come back again for another cycle of this. You know, I want to be with the angels. Yes, I was yeah. just talking about this yesterday. Somebody was asking if I believed in heaven. And I said that I, I don't really believe in heaven and hell as the way that it's laid out in Christianity. Mm -hmm. I believe that hell actually is having to come back and do this life over and over and over and not learning it fast enough and so when you're talking about the egyptians and how they would go to sleep and then wake up mm -hmm. if we let's say we we die we go to sleep we wake up i'm me tess it took me 34 years to even begin to open my eyes and like actually wake up and i wasted a third of my life quote unquote mm -hmm. asleep like still sleeping even though i wasn't asleep anymore I was like yes. I was just kind of walking around and not remembering so then mm -hmm. that Saturn time comes and rings your neck and is like wake up and like slaps yes. you in the face your puts the alarm in your ear it's like like wake up yeah and then you wake and so then it's the rest of that life to try to learn as many lessons as you can to get to that like next level and then you go to yeah. sleep you wake up and it's again so having to do that forever that feels like hell yeah so then Very going true. beyond into that eighth layer the ninth layer that's yes. the ascension and that's hopefully yeah. what we can remember sooner yeah yeah that's that's exactly right yeah like and you, you see images of saturn it's a, it's he's always has the uh, he's like a grim reaper too he has the uh the sick the sickle the sickle of death you know because and, and remember in the ancients they would people would die at 30 they would just die at 30 <laughs> and and like is that true or is that this myth like you die at 30 like what dies your ego you know like you know what i mean like what what dies at 30 uh, did, did you people just really drop that at 30 i don't think so but something dies at 30 and it's i think it's the old the old shell dies in you you transform again so yeah so i had a recent astro cartography reading 
Oh, sweet. Yeah. That I'm now thinking is probably, I have to check back with her and see, but it, I feel like it probably would be laid out in the tropical fashion and because she didn't mention sidereal in it. But mm -hmm. what she pointed out was over Saratoga Springs, New York, which is where I was born and lived most of my life until I flew the coop yeah. and came to Los Angeles, yeah. running straight through that line, that point on the Earth's map is Saturn. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and no she way. was like, how do you connect with your home? And I was like, Whoa. pretty hard. I mean, yeah. like I have a loving family, but I've also had, ex I've experienced a lot of trauma. Saratoga in itself never really clicked with me. It always felt really yeah. hard. It didn't feel like I fit in or that it, I could like really relax and settle down. Whereas yeah. now I'm living in Los Angeles and every significant line of, of life, money, career, relationship, health, it's all running straight through the point of Los Angeles. And I, oh, yeah. and I didn't know that until I was already here. I had followed my gut across the country and landed in LA. And this mm -hmm. uh, astro cartographer was like, that is amazing that you made yeah. it here to where you need to be to get all of these yeah. points in check. So, wow. Yeah. So she must say have, that Saturn is that's yeah. Yes. So she must've, that must've been your Jupiter line was uh, in, in LA and probably a North node. Cause that's all hitting your second house. Yeah, so just to be clear, so when she's, when when tropical astrologers and sidereal astrologers are saying the planets, like, okay, so Jupiter's in your second house, if we're using equal house, 30 degree houses, it's 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 still there, like Jupiter is there, but what's in the background is, is not the sign that tropical says. So if she's saying Saturn, the planet is there, then that's right. But Saturn in the constellation of whatever, Sagittarius? No, it's not. It's in the Fucus. It's in the galactic center. So, but you probably have, because I was looking at your chart, you have a uh, North Node, Moon, and Jupiter all in your second house. And that's your house of, that's abundant. A second house is resources and abundance. And Jupiter expands it. Uh, moon allows you to be kind of feel the energy of where you need to be. And the North Node, we know the North Node is your path. So since you're more aligned with spirit rather than in money right now, and, and your, your value now is, is spirituality because because you have this divine feminine transmutation way about you. So now you're like, I'm resonating with that. So naturally you, you start to fall into truth pattern and you follow your path, which is abundance. So your Jupiter line, you follow the Jupiter line and you land in LA. You know, if you didn't, if you're following a Saturn line, I don't know where she said Saturn, you'd be in Saratoga and you'd be probably trying to open a restaurant and serving a lot of alcohol because that's where the money is in Saratoga and you'll be miserable and you'd be an alcoholic yourself. <laughs> so like, that's the, you know what I mean? That's the opposite, right? <laughs> that also yeah. feels like hell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not living so, my true path yeah. now feels like hell. Yeah, and that's exactly what, yeah, what we're discussing. So Saturn comes around and says, you better wake up because the laws are the laws. If you're not on path, you're going to come back and you're going to repeat again. And it's going to be harder because, you know, how to punishment, right? That's what we learn as kids, punishment. You don't do the right thing, we'll lock you in a room. Do it again, lock you longer. Do it again, lock you longer. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Gosh. This is yeah. amazing and so important information to be becoming aware of it's it's hard for me like even the Taurus thing I really but I do want to raise the point that when we zoomed in I remember this because I was so yeah. resistant to Taurus that when we yeah. zoomed in my placement was exactly on the last star that is actually in like the toe if you will of Gemini and so yeah, it's yeah. still in the actual constellation of Gemini, but the mm -hmm. spans of like where people on a map look at Taurus, that line was in Taurus, but I'm actually in the Gemini constellation. So what would you say yeah. to that? Yeah, I'm actually looking at it. I'm looking at you right now in Stellarium, the sky program. You're right on the horn. The sun is right on the horn. So 
So let me get back so I can see myself. So Taurus has the 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 horns. Okay. And Gemini is right here. Okay, so, so they're yes, right next to each other. Yeah, it's right there in the middle. Um, and but what you do have, which would make you feel very much Gemini, is you have your two most important personal planets in Gemini, and it's in the fifth house. So you have Mars, and you have and you have Mercury conjunct in Gemini in the fifth house. So fifth house is the house of the sun. It's ruled by the sun. This is how you express yourself. Okay. Mars is action. This is how you move through life. This is, you move, your Mars energy is, you know, and Mercury is your, your intellect. Your, 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 your uh, uh, I, wrote, I wrote it down, I was doing work on it, but like your logic. So your logical thinking mind that takes action in life, fifth house life is Gemini. So that's okay. why you would relate to Gemini. And what but about Pisces? Your, uh, yeah, your moon, you know, Pisces is a really long, big constellation. It's over 40 degrees. So mm -hmm. I use those, those actual sizes. So your, your, set, your moon is 17 degrees Pisces, uh, North Node's 19 degrees, and, and Jupiter is 35 degrees Pisces. So your oh, so my North much, Node is Pisces. Yeah, your North Node is in Pisces, yeah. That's important yeah. to know because in yeah. tropical... I believe it says my north node is Capricorn. And I always was like, nope. <laughs> well, no, south node. That, well, really? They said Capricorn? No. Wow. I think so. That's I'd have crazy. to look at that again. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's way off. Yeah. Yeah, no way. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah. So. Okay, so my path is in the Pisces constellation. That feels. Yeah, that feels right. and it's falling in the second house. So this is about your values. And, 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 um. In, and your values, it looks like, because I was looking longer because your it's the, the, the moon conjunct North node is opposing South node in the eighth house. And this is why I say, you know, transmutation. So eighth house is, is ruled by Pluto and Scorpio and it's in Virgo. So you know transformation. And since you have Pluto there, but it's in the ninth, right on the cusp between eighth and ninth, you, you, you know how to work with the energy that 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 already you, you already know so now your path is to how do i create value from all this transmutation because people obviously we know can get stuck in the drama and the trauma of the cycles but you're putting it into use now that's your path is to make it make it make it valuable instead of crumbled so crumble it but then make it make use of it and build new again and bigger, Jupiter, bigger, right? So that's mm. that's your path. <laughs> that's awesome. I had an animal totem reading yeah. in Saratoga and my main, I had so many animals come up that I can't remember which one was my main, but one of the ones that was very prominent was ant energy, which I okay. thought was really cool. It's the energy behind the ant is that one you can carry a lot, like yeah. they're super strength, <laughs> not physically yeah. carry, but like I, I have carried a lot, Yeah. but mainly that I can rebuild endlessly. Oh yeah. And that's yeah. that transformation energy that if it crumbles, like yeah. picture an ant hole and then it rains and then they rebuild it. And then a yeah. little kid comes and steps on it and then yeah. they rebuild it. And yeah. then any, any situation they're endlessly rebuilding and that is just inherent in me. So it's also in the stars. Wow, yeah, wow, that, that sounds just about right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, ant energy. I never heard that, I never heard that one, the ant energy, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isaac, That's this awesome. has been like beyond awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank really you. I appreciate it yeah yeah it's been so good to do this too yeah to just like share especially with you you know like we've known each other for a while so it's happy that you're doing this yeah yeah uh, where can people connect with you if they want a reading oh. or they want your courses information oh cool yeah so uh siderealastrologist.com so si you spell it side real s-i-d-e-r-e-a-l astrologist.com I also have another domain, learn astrology, learn sidereal astrology.com. That's for my courses because I teach courses. And then I have an amazing Facebook group called Sidereal Revolution. 
And that's really cool because because we have a lot of active members on there that are just like sharing a wealth of knowledge. So those three ways you can get involved with me. Amazing. Yeah. Is there anything yeah. else that's coming into your mind that you feel is important to share? Uh, I think we covered a lot. I mean, I can go on forever, but yeah, we covered we covered a lot. Like that was good. That yeah, was. especially my time in Egypt is coming through here. You know, there's a lot more coming. So. Yes, listeners, soak up all of that Egyptian energy that's coming through this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Isaac, and yeah. see you all soon. Bye. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.